Welcome to Fish on Fridays. I'm Al McCauley, and I would be willing to bet that anybody who's listening to this particular episode has heard at some point in your childhood, way back when you were younger, I bet you've heard the story about George Washington cutting down the cherry tree when he was a child. Now, I'm assuming most of you remember that the story goes that he cut down a cherry tree and his father found out that the cherry tree was, was knocked down and he asked George about it. And young George Washington, the story goes, said... Father, I cannot tell a lie. It was me. I did it. Now, I don't know if you'd be surprised by this, but there's absolutely no historical evidence that that story ever occurred, that it ever actually happened in history. And yet, we still hear about this through the ages, through the generations. American children have been told that story over and over again for over 250 years. So why has it persisted if there's absolutely no historical evidence that it ever occurred? Well, it's persisted because even though it might be called, filed under what we call legend, all legend has truth to it. And so that's kind of what I want to talk about today. Every November 1st, the Catholic Church remembers a great solemnity of All Saints Day. And if you've watched Fish on Fridays in the past, I'd say probably about half of our over 230 episodes have been about the lives of different specific saints. And today I want to talk to you about those saints collectively that we would call legendary saints that they are saints, they're set apart, they're for people for us to emulate and to, to follow their example, but there's just not a whole lot of historical proof that they existed or the miracles that they are purported to have, have uh, done, that, that we don't have evidence of them. So we call that collectively, we call those things apocryphal. Apocryphal basically means we don't have enough authenticity to prove that it historically happened. Um, but again, I would say that just because we can't prove it didn't happen doesn't mean it doesn't have some kind of truth to it. So to use, for instance, the George Washington story I started this episode with, even though we can't prove it happened, we still tell the story because of at least two truths that we get from it. Number one, when you're confronted, you shouldn't tell a lie. And number two, you should always accept personal responsibility. And those two truths of that story are so important and so vital to our to our lives as humans and good fellow citizens on this planet that we tell the story over and over again, generation after generation, regardless of whether it historically happened or not. So those are the truths that we get from that particular story. There's a, a Catholic author named Kathy Coffey, and she said, I love this quote. She said, sometimes we need legend more than bread. Now, I've done stories about Uh, many, many episodes about these apocryphal saints, people who the church has said, you know, we're not sure much about them. Um, St. Bridget of Ireland, St. Margaret of Antioch, uh, St. Valentine, St. Christopher, just to name a few. Um, They're they're everywhere. I've done more than that. We at Fish on Fridays have have committed a lot of time to saints that we can't prove historically happened or or actually lived or the stories that we know, the legendary stories we know, that they actually did them. But they persist through the generations, through the centuries, because of the truths that they reveal. So let's back up a little bit and look at this collective group of people I would call legendary saints. In 1969, the Catholic Church decided that we are going to take 93 of them off of the liturgical calendar. This is Pope Paul VI. And he decided to take those people that I mentioned, for instance, St. Christopher, St. Saint, uh, Saint Valentine. Um, they took them off the liturgical calendar because, again, they're apocryphal. We can't prove that they existed. We have very little evidence of their historicity. And so what are we going to do but to take them off and then replace them, if you will, with saints who we do have valid, authentic proof that they existed and their miracles were attributed. So it's very important we understand, though, if you have a devotion to these saints— The church is saying, absolutely, by all means, pray to them, pray with them, keep them in mind, emulate them. That's great. Understand that if they bring you to the gospel truth of Christ, then that's okay. But we as a church are just not going to remember them liturgically in the calendar anymore. So if you have, a, for instance, a specific devotion to St. Christopher, a lot of travelers do, pray to St. Christopher by all means. The church is not outlawing that by any stretch. All they're saying is we're not going to recognize him on the liturgical calendar. Now, I'll say this about legendary saints. I love teaching them because, I, again, I think there are truths that we learn. And again, if you watch some of these past episodes that I've done on specific saints, you'll always learn, hopefully, some kind of truth that their life reveals. I think about Jesus' words to his apostles, and specifically John chapter 14, verse 12. And he says, Amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, but even greater than that, because I'll be going to my Father. So when we hear about some of these 
these miracles, these legendary stories, we shouldn't be too shocked because, I mean, Jesus said, you're going to do things greater than I did. And what did he do? He multiplied the loaves and the fishes. He walked on water. He raised the dead. He cured the sick. He healed the blind. I mean, it, the list goes on and on. So if Jesus is saying to his disciples and ultimately to us, hey, you're going to do things greater than I am doing because I'll be up in heaven making sure it all happens. My grace will flow through you. We shouldn't be too surprised, I don't think, that these saints, these legendary saints, have, have worked um, their miracles or God's miracles through them uh, in their lives. Again, whether or not we can prove them historically, what truths can we take? And so I would just, I would say there are three points that I would want to leave you with. When you think about saints who are, who are legendary or might be tough to believe, even if we don't know if they existed histor uh, historically, it's important to not just poo-poo them because you want to avoid reductionism. Limiting our faith just to the human level, to what we can prove, if you will, that really limits God. God, as I said in John's gospel, he says, you're going to do great things. And so we shouldn't be, we shouldn't avoid that, that truth. We should know that by reducing these saints to mere legends and then just poo-pooing, forgetting about them, we're really doing the same to God. We're limiting our faith and diminishing God. The second point I'd say about legendary saints is this. It's important as Catholics, as Christians, we always seek to understand. I think you'd agree that it's incredibly easy to be cynical. I mean, it's so easy to say, well, you know what? They didn't live. They, 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 we don't know enough about them, so that's all there is to it. It's a lot harder to do, take a deep dive into the lives of these saints and to find the truths, try to find the lessons that they teach us today that we can take from it so that we can learn and become better Christians. So avoid reductionism, seek to understand. And the third thing, lesson I think we take from these legendary saints is that it helps us to embrace mystery. You know, we should expect miracles, as Jesus says. We shouldn't think about, think about the life of Jesus from the virgin birth to the resurrection from the dead. All of those are miracles and everything in between. We shouldn't, uh, we should expect nothing less than miracles in our lives. Every day you wake up is a miracle. I know that sounds trite and, and, and you know, kind of cliche, but it's, it's absolutely true because you did not wake yourself up. You were woke. You, you woke up today because God's grace allowed that to happen. So it's a miracle. And I think I guess the last point I'll say about legendary saints is when we look at their lives, when we focus on them and talk about them, and all saints, not just legendary saints, all those saints, even the ones that we know um, a lot about historically. I think collectively they reveal something to us about our own identity as Christians. You know, they say something about us. They say something about God and. Really, because of that, they help us to draw closer to God. And that's really what saints are all about. They're, they're trying to draw us closer to the Lord. And that's it. So anyway, hey, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, episode on Legendary Saints. If you'd like to share this content, that would be great. We would love it if you'd subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Facebook. But either way, we hope you keep tuning in every Friday for Fish on Fridays. Until next time, please be good to each other. And God bless. Mm -hmm.